Hello and welcome to this Mithril Money Securities Investment 101 course. This is Lecture 19, Money Market Yields. Now we're going to be talking particularly today about what's called the money markets. And the money markets tend to be everything less than one year. So if we go up to one year, which the money markets will typically declare is 360 days, we've got an awful lot of liquidity. Once we go beyond one year, we're going to start losing liquidity. And lots of people need cash liquidity. Remember, at the left-hand end here, we have cash. So if typically you were, say, an insurance company, then what you'd like to do is invest in the money markets, get some return, not much return, but some return. But if ever you need that money in a hurry, you can always sell and get straight back out because there's so much liquidity in the money markets because you're so near to cash. Now, we have four main kind of yields that we need to be thinking about in the money markets. The first yield is known as the bank discount yield, and that's the one you'll typically see on yield curves. So if you see a yield curve, you'll see yields like this on yield curves, and they will be bank discount yields. Now we'll take those yields, and from those yields we can work out the prices for the various instruments that we're discussing in the money markets, and that will usually be zero coupon bonds, or commercial paper, or treasury bills, or other IOUs which don't have coupons, but which are just pieces of paper which will deliver some money at some point in the future in 360 days or less time. Now, the second kind of yield we need to think about is called a holding period yield. What I want you to imagine is this. We'll just mark the period in which you get involved in the market. You get involved at 360 days and you think you're going to go to the end. But something crops up and you sell at that point there. So you sell with 270 days to go. What we'd like is some kind of measure which will give us a yield for that particular period. And it's basically going to be the profit that you've made divided by the price that you entered the market at. But that's only going to be a 90-day period. So as well as the holding period yield, we'd like to know how well we've done on an annualised basis. Because let's imagine that you were the gold insurance company and you sold your piece of paper to the silver insurance company and they went all the way to the end. So they held the instrument for 270 days. Now they would have their own holding period yield, but it would probably be much larger than yours because they've had much longer. So there's the gold insurance company's holding period yield. There's the silver insurance company's holding period yield. But the silver one's probably going to be much higher just as a basis of time. What you would like to do is figure out who did better between the two of you. And there are two different measures for annualising a holding period yield. The simple, less accurate one is called the money market yield, and that's going to be based on 360 days. But the much more accurate one, which many people prefer, is called the effective annual yield, and that's actually going to use 365 days. So if the holding period yield is the profit divided by the price you paid, then the money market yield is just simply going to be the holding period yield multiplied by 360 divided by the time period. So if that was 90 days, that would be 90 days. And that would give you basically the holding period yield times four. The effective annual yield is a bit more sophisticated and it would be the holding period yield plus one and then that would be raised to the power of 365. Now that's a very strange number in the money markets, 365. And then that would be divided by the holding period. So that would be divided by 90. And then because we've added on one here, we need to take one off. So we take one off that, and that would give you the effective annual yield. And it would generally be slightly bigger than the money market yield. Okay, so there's the four main yields that we need to talk about in the money market. Let's get on then to the first one of these, which is the bank discount yield. And that's especially useful for forming prices. And we typically just read these things off a yield curve. Let's get to that then. First of all, of course, we'll need to draw a yield curve. So let's just do that quickly. So here's our yield curve here. And this yield curve is only going to go up to 360 days. Let's put a couple of other markers in there. So 270 and 90 there. Let's put some interest rates along the side. So that's going to be one, two, 
screen full. And these are going to be our money market yields. So the first one we need is the riskless yield curve. And this is going to be the riskless yield curve from Mithril Money Island. Now, if you remember from previous lectures, that's generally formed by the Mithril Money Bank. So let's just put the riskless yield curve in there. Now, if you remember as well, the banks of Mithril Money Island will typically be giving us the interbank offer rate, which we're going to call the MyBOR rate. So let's just put that in there. So that's going to be MyBOR, which is higher than the riskless yield curve. Let's just label the riskless yield curve while we're here. Also as well, there are going to be corporate pieces of paper in the money markets. So if we have the Mithril Money Fish Source Company, they might be issuing zero coupon bonds. Now the markets have decided that whatever products Mithril Money Fish Source Company releases will always be rated at MyBall plus 100 basis points. So as long as we know the MyBall curve, then we're going to know the Mithril Money Fish Source curve. Now I only need two rates today, so let's put those in. So I need the 270 days, which I think is about 3%. And I need the 360 days, which I think is about 3.9%. Now what we can do is we can squeeze in the Mithril Money Fish Source Company yield because we know that everything is going to be 100 basis points higher than the MyBall curve. We're also going to make the assumption that all these yield curves are going to be frozen for a year, but that's just by the by. So let's put the Mithril Money Fish Source Company yield curve in. So we know that that's going to be 100 basis points higher. So that has to be 4% there. And the other one needs to be at 360 days needs to be 100 basis points higher. Now I'm just going to have to fudge this to get it onto the slide. You're just going to have to imagine that that is 100 basis points. And that's going to be 4.9% in that top corner there. And now we can draw a yield curve, a very fudged yield curve for the Mithril Money Fish Source Company. And I think it would look something like that. So all of their money market products, 100 basis points spread to the MyBall rate. Now the two key interest rates on here, the 270 day rate, which is 4%, and we have the 360 day rate, which is 4.9% in that top corner there. Now let's come up with a product that we're going to be selling. So I'm going to draw a timeline, but I'm going to do this the wrong way round from how we normally do it. Now this is going to be days to maturity for the Mithril Money Fish Source zero coupon bond, but I'm going to do it the wrong way round. I'm going to have zero at this end and I'm going to have 360 days at the other end. I'll have 180 days in the middle there and that's going to be 270 days and that's going to be 90 days there. Now, the Mithril Money Fish Source Company have released this zero coupon bond. Here it is. And essentially what it is, it's a $1 million payment if you're holding a piece of paper. Here's the piece of paper here, the Mithril Money Fish Source Company zero coupon bond, IOU. If you're holding that piece of paper at the end and they still exist and they're fulfilling their contracts, they will give you $1 million. So who wants to buy it? Well, you want to buy it. You represent the gold insurance company or GIC and you want to put some money into the markets and you're intending to hold for 360 days to get the full $1 million. Now, how much should you pay for that piece of paper down in the corner there? Well, what we need to do is we need to take a line across and then we need to figure out what is going to be the discount. There's the discount there that you will receive for buying that piece of paper. So you will pay less than 1 million for that piece of paper. You will pay some price, the 360 day price, and you will receive a discount. Now that discount will be given to you by the bank discount yield. And if we go back to the previous slide and look at the 360 day yield, that's going to be the 4.9%. So that price will be driven by a yield of 4.9%. And if you were to hold this piece of paper till the end, for the 360 days, then that discount would eventually be your profit. So let's work out what that discount is going to be on a handy spreadsheet I prepared earlier. Here we go, nothing on here again, no formulas. So we need to just put the interest rate in there of 4.9%. There we go. Uh, the days to maturity is going to be 360 days. So we'll just put that in there. The discount then, what's that going to be? That's going to be 
driven by a formula. So let's do that now. So that's going to be equal to the bank discount yield multiplied by the face value, multiplied by brackets, the days to maturity divided by the number of days in a money market year, which is generally 360. That will give us the discount that we can expect on this particular product. So the price will be equal to 1 million, take away 49,000. So that's going to be the price you're going to pay. And you can see it's popped up on our chart down there. And that's $951,000. So what's your profit? Well, we don't know yet because we haven't got there. Let's then go back to our scenario. Here we go. Now, what happens is you, the gold insurance company, receive a massive insurance claim. Somebody has uh, sank their ship or whatever it is. Anyway, you need to pay out a lot of money. So what you're going to do is you're going to sell your piece of paper down here. You're going to sell it to probably another insurance company who are cash rich at the moment. Let's imagine that that's your best friend and your best friend here is running the silver insurance company. Now, what price are they going to pay for their particular bond? That will again be given to us by the yield for 200 and 70 days. Let's just have a quick look then at the yield curve and we can see there that that's going to be 4%. So let's come back to here and we're going to put 4% as the yield that they're going to buy this thing at and that's going to give you the 270 day price. So let's just pop that onto our spreadsheet, pop that into there, 4%, days to go, 270, and now the discount is going to be essentially, we just copy that down, and the discount there is going to be 30,000. Let's work out the price then. That should pop down too. And there we go. Let's just comment those two fields because we've now finished with those particular things. So that is how we use the bank discount yield to work out a discount. And then we can easily work out a price from taking the discount away from a face value. We can now also work out a profit for us because we paid 951 and we sold at 970. So we can work out a profit. So that's going to equal the selling price, take away the buying price. That gives us 19,000. We can now work out a holding period yield. Remember, that's going to be the profit we make divided by the price we paid, which is fantastic. We just go back to our other diagram. That's essentially going to be that little bit of difference that you just made there divided by the initial price. And that will give you the profit divided by the price. That will give you your holding period yield. So let's just jump back to our spreadsheet again to do that. So that is going to be equal to the profit divided by the price. And that gives us our holding period yield of 1.998%. Remember, that's only over 90 days. Now, we need to work out the money market yield, but to get that, we need the holding period. Now, we know that that period there, let's just draw that period in there just to show you graphically. That period from there to there is 90 days. The difference between 360 and 270. Let's just figure that out on the spreadsheet and then calculate the money market yield. So the holding period there is equal to the 360 days take away 270 days. That's the holding period. We can now work out the money market yield, the simple money market yield, and that's equal to the holding period return multiplied by brackets, the money market year divided by the holding period and that gives us the money market yield, 7.992%. Now that's great, but that's a very simplistic yield. Let's go for the more complicated, effective annual yield. That is going to be equal to the power, one plus the holding period yield, and then that's going to be raised to the power of the effective annual yield year, which is 365 days, divided by the holding period, which is 90 days. And then we need to take away one just to complete the job. And that gives us 8.353%, which is very, very nice. Now, we'd like to see how well we've done against our friend and our competitor. Now, they are going to be holding everything until the end of the year. So they will be holding their bond until the end of the year. That's 270 days. And let's imagine everything goes well. Well, at the end of the year, they will be picking up $1 million. Let's plug all those figures into our spreadsheet to see how well they've done. The profit there, that's going to be equal to the 1 million, take away the price they paid, 
which is 30,000, which isn't bad, but remember they had 270 days to get that far. Let's work out the holding period yield for nine months. That's going to be equal to the profit divided by the price they paid. That's 3.093, again, better than you, but that's not being annualized. What was their holding period? That's equal to exactly 270 days. And these two formulas should just copy down. So all oh, not as good as you and definitely not as good as you. So you are the winner. And I think that covers all four of the major yields in the money markets. Let's just comment these for you then. And drag that one down. Comment this one for you. And comment this final field as well. Okay, I'll see you next time.